In this video, I'm going to do um, a tonal uh, painting um, involving some trees, some l gorgeous amounts of light, um, and the main subject will be these um, stag deer uh, in the foreground. But I don't want to put too much detail in uh, for the stags. I want more silhouette than anything else. I want to get as much light coming through from the back as I can. And I want the whole thing to be curtained either side, if you like, by the trees and the leaves and so forth. Now this arrangement is just a little bit too uniform. I don't like that. Um, I like to offset things. So basically what I've done is to use this as a basis and one or two other photographs as well. And omit one of the, the stag there and have this group of three uh, offset to the left. When you put objects in which are more than one in number, odd numbers are good, so one, three, five um, in number is great. Uh, for some reason even numbers are not just frowned upon but they just don't look quite right perhaps. So this is nicely offset. We're going to have a lot of light coming through around here. Um, and a lot of contrast with the tree trunks and with the, uh, um, the the deer themselves. Now, I don't really want a lot of detail in the deer. Them are going to be mainly in silhouette, so I've sort of hinted in the sketch at where the eyes might be, but I'm not necessarily going to put um, those in. Um, the colours I'm going to use, uh, for the yellows, I'm going to use lemon yellow. Um, you could use cad yellow, but I'm going to use this lovely colour, New Gamboge. Both of those Winston Newton colours. I'm also going to use some quinacridone uh, deep gold. That's a Daniel Smith colour. Maybe some quinacridone sienna. That's a really nice, that's very close to burnt sienna, that colour. And then um, some burnt umber at the same time. I might just use a little bit of uh, but see, I'll just see, see how it all goes. Um, so those are the colours. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, a fair amount of splatter going. A lot of people use um, masking fluid just to uh, mask out the whole um, details and so forth uh, whilst they put on large background washes. Um, I'm a bit churlish about doing that. I don't have a lot of success with uh, masking fluid. Uh, maybe I'm just not um, uh, patient enough with it. But I do use it for splatter. So having drawn the picture out and put roughly where the trees are and so forth, uh, not gone for too much detail, um, what I have done is I've laid down a bit of masking fluid splatter. I'll just put a little bit more on. I don't want too much um, on the the animals themselves, but I'm just going to maybe a little bit more over here. Down. And I'm going to use that during the painting as well. Right, that's enough of that. So we'll come back to that again later on um, as we go through the, uh, the painting process. So I need to dry that off uh, now um, before I start laying down some of the washes. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is to wet the paper. Large brush, lots of water. You know that this is just in a sketchbook. It's um, sort of 400 gram paper anyway, so it doesn't cockle very much. I haven't uh, bothered stretching it. Just make sure that the paper is well covered. By the way, when you're doing things like splattering and so forth, always wear an apron. Don't um, paint with your best clothes on. So now I'm going to lay down... I want to keep this, this area here nice and light, so I'm going to lay down uh, a light wash of lemon yellow. A sort of circular fashion. I want to leave almost white paper in the centre. This circular method of putting in um, a wash and leaving the centre sort of lights or bullseye method if you like, um, it's very good for things like sunsets where you want some nice light and then having a dark church or something silhouetted 
in, in the center so you get that sort of lovely feeling of contrast so that was lemon yellow um, I could have put in some new gamboge a lot of people are not very familiar with new gamboge uh, it doesn't look like much of an attractive color when you get it out of the tube sort of dirty brown but uh, it's got this sort of translucent yellow golden yellow um, feel to it so whilst that's still wet start putting this in I don't want it to be too uniformly round so uh, sketch it in I think what I'm going to do there now is I'm going to allow that to, to dry and then I'm going to do a little bit more splatter and then re-wet it and put in more of the, the, the other washes. Right, so my initial washes are on and I have um, re-splattered again, which means that when I take all the splatter off at the end of the day, I'll have um, little lights, little white lights from the white paper coming through and then little yellow lights as well coming through from this first wash because I'm going to darken this wash um, as we go on. Now looking at it I feel as though I've got just perhaps a little bit too much uh, white in the middle there. I can um, have a choice there, I can either do something about that now or later on but what I am going to do is completely re-wet the paper In fact, this, the water I'm using to wet it has got a slight amount of um, lemon yellow in it anyway from the initial wash, so that'll help take away some of that white. That's good. Just going to drop in a little bit of lemon yellow where I feel as though I've got just a little bit too much white. There we go. Um, I'm just going to thicken up the new gamboge a little bit. Um, just in one or two places. That's fine. And now I'm going to use um, some quinacridone deep gold. This is a Daniel Smith colour. Um, you possibly haven't got this in your kit. Um, so you can use yellow ochre. Um, and it's up to you. You can use um, cadmium orange. Will do a nice job as well. So here we go. I don't want it too. I don't want the wash to be too uh, flat. I want it to be a bit variegated. So beginning to think about the, the trees and the branches and so on there. Just. Uh, But um, should you feel like investing in some new colours, this quinacridone gold from Daniel Smith is lovely stuff. It really is nice. Um, if I'm doing some buildings which are maybe uh, a brick or sandstone in colour, um, just to bring a building further forward, I might do a, a wash on it of this quinacridone gold. And it just makes things leap forward. And it's got a lovely, even though it's only a, it's a sort of a yellow based um, colour, it's got a very, very good tonal range. Um, as you can see here, going from very light to, uh, you know, putting it on quite sticky. And it's, uh, it's quite deep. Now, just to complement that, but um, and again, you possibly haven't got this. I'm going to use some Kunakadone Sienna, which is in the same sort of Daniel Smith series. Um, a little bit like burnt sienna, so if you're not using this, you can use burnt sienna. And it's got a little bit more red in it.
That was a fairly simple foreground, so... I'm just going to keep to a very small palette. And you can see how that lovely red is um, bringing the foreground a little bit f forward. Just use a little bit more up here. I won't go too far high up. Good. Now, that's possibly a little bit too wet to do much more. Um, but I think... I might just let that dry a little bit, but as I do that, I'm going to introduce some burnt umber. Use a slightly small brush. The um, the brushes that I tend to use um, to vary a bit, but I do like to use Da Vinci Maestro um, brushes, uh, ten, the 10 series. Um, they are expensive, but um, as far as I'm concerned, they're well worth the investment. They last quite well, um, except on, <laughs> on something like Arsh, rough paper. Um, where they tend to to get worn out quite quickly with the with the roughness of the paper. So here's me just starting off, and I come back into this later on and do these trees and branches and so forth with a little bit more sharpness. But I just want to get some of the Of the background. Beginning to, to look all right. It's a fairly large tree here. Um, and the light's coming through from the background, so it's going to be the inner, the right hand side of the left hand trees and left hand side of the right hand trees, which is going to be lighter because the, the light is the sun or whatever is coming through the center. So, you can see from this what you need is a nice fine brush. There you go. So you see the trees are uh, beginning to come together. I want some trees in the background too so I'm going to put in some light ones later on. I've changed brush. This is a rigger. As you see, what you need to do, rather than sitting over at a table, is to stand up, hold the brush right at the back end of the, the handle, and just flick in movements, and don't try to make them continuous. Remember that a lot of trees are, this is probably going to cause some political controversy, but a lot of them are... I call them mas masculine in shape, not all of them, but in other words, the branches are awkward and go off in all sorts of directions and um, they're not what I call feminine shapes, which are nice and curvaceous and, and so forth. I'm going to get into trouble for saying that, but 
you know what I mean. Very often when you see people um, doing trees, the, the branches are just, you see that, see what I'm doing there, I'm sort of going off in a different direction, gnarled, awkward shapes. I suppose I'll get into trouble for saying that it's a male shape, <laughs> but uh, anyway. And that's sort of disappearing, that one there's sort of disappearing into the mist above. Um, you could go on doing this forever. Ch change the um, the tone, use a stickier, I'm just using burnt, uh, burnt uh, umbery here. Um, uh, add a little bit of water as you go, or make it more, make it stickier, or whatever, just so you get different tones coming out. Anyway, as I say, you could go on forever doing that. I'm going to come to an end at that point. And what I will do now is add some more splatter, but this time not masking fluid. But some of the other colours I've already, I've already used, so I'm going to use a bit of the uh, quinacridone gold And a little bit of quinacridone sienna. I'll come back and do more of this later on. So I'm going to dry that off now. Right, so I am uh, sitting down now. Just a little reminder, having made all sorts of mistakes myself in the past, if you've been using your um, masking fluid, do make sure that um, you put the top back on and put it to one side. Um, the number of times I have tipped a bottle up and uh, left a horrible mess everywhere. So now I'm just going to um, uh, do a little bit of work on these uh, these deer. Um, I'm going to use. Um, a little bit of burnt sienna, I think, to start off with. I don't, I just want shapes, I don't particularly want a lot of detail. Um, so, start with this one that's in the rear. Legs disappear. Mm. 
need a brush with a nice fine point for this. And go over to Burnt Humber. It'll be taking some light on the on its back and its upper works. So Burnt Humber I'm going to use mainly down below. Working wet into wet so that it's lovely soft change from Colour to colour, tone to colour, tone to tone, tone to tone. Just going to Take a little bit of colour off, a little bit of tone off its head using a hungry brush, so a damp brush. come back to that in a moment. So I'm now going to do the same treatment for the other two deer. Now these two, one overlaps the other so I'm going to make sure there's some contrast between the two there so that one gives shape to the other. Go back to my burnt umber. Keep that area there light because I'm going to have dark on the the main character. And do the same with our friend here. Now you can begin to see that as we put some tone onto these main characters, having left the background very, very light, we get this lovely contrast and The main part of the painting starts to 
really shine out, come forward. So this is just a base coat at the moment. I'll put burnt umber on. Got plenty of contrast between this one, the main character, and the one behind it. So you can see there, light against dark. You get that contrast. So the shape of this one here, part of it is dictated by the, the lightness of the deer behind it. dark antler there that brings that antler ahead of the tree that's behind it. So that's our characters coming along. Just going to let that dry. Right, so having dried those yeah, when I was off, I've started going back in again to put a little bit of detail. So I put some eyes in, again just with burnt umber and the snouts. Um, nothing more than that, using shadow and a little bit of detail work there, but not a lot. Um, it's very, very easy to get um, drawn into putting too much detail in and getting worried about shapes and uh, accuracy and, and so forth. Um, this one's a little bit further forward than the um, the other two so it does require just a little bit more detail perhaps. If I make a mistake, as I have done with others at times, just use a damp brush, a damp cloth or whatever, just to take, a, take off what you don't want. It's very easy to get it almost right and then just to go that little bit further and uh, mess, mess it up. So. Almost there, I think. So I'm just now going to, having more or less sorted out the deer, just going to plant them a little bit more into the ground. I've used a bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just flicking in some reedy type of shapes, nice thin brush. so that they become part of the, the painting rather than just standing by themselves. Using a bit of positive negative painting here. The negative being the, the yellow. Just 
Don't want to make that too stark, so just soften that up a little bit. Good. Okay, now I'm going to stand back. and do a little bit of burnt umber splutter up here I could have spent a lot more time on these trees putting more branches in and so on and so forth but uh, I think what I've done there is enough for a simple painting like I say just make sure when you do splatter, especially if there's masking fluid, that you do cover yourself up and cover anything else up that you don't want to be splattered. You can mask areas. I'm getting some stuff down here which I don't really want, so I could just stop and put a mask over that. When I say a mask, I mean just a bit of paper that's been torn or cut to the right shape just to protect and cover up. But um, I think I'm okay. I can get some of that out with some clean, uh, clean water in a minute. Okay, that's all right. Don't go too far. Good. So again, that needs to be dried. Right. Um, time to finish up and tidy up. Um, moment of truth. Let's see what happens when we take off masking fluid two blobs which are bigger than I thought they might be um, but you can see now I've only done um, masking fluid on the white paper and then masking fluid on one of the washes and you can see the difference the masking fluid on the white paper the white is coming through quite dramatically and then there are other areas there for instance and around here where the um, masking fluid was put on after the first wash and you can see the yellow coming through now you could do that process over and over and over again. Um, I can remember seeing a demonstration by Tony Dowden um, where he probably did about five or six washes and did a masking um, fluid splatter between each wash. And so you've got different tones coming through in the, uh, in the holes, if you like, in the splatter. Um, and it looked absolutely gorgeous, quite startling. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of rebalancing here and there just to finish off um, just going to I'm using my that new gamboge we could use a cad yellow or whatever just to extend some of these of that just pat that out a little bit that's fine and in the foreground do a similar thing but in this case do it with some burnt umber burnt umber is a lovely lovely colour it's um, nice and warm has a lot of red in it and um, it's a good foreground colour So it's a good colour for bringing items, whether it's grasses or 
buildings or whatever else forward in your painting. Um, Good. Okay. I think that's enough for the moment. Um, so again, the mantra is um, contrast. Uh, the, sorting out where your lightest lights are going to go and your darkest darks. We've got these animals in the middle um, to bring them up. Um, we don't want them right in the foreground, but we want them sort of middle ground. But to make them really stand out, then you want dark tones on their uh, fur against the light of the light coming through uh, the trees. Um, and then a little bit of uh, darkness on either side to give you a sort of curtaining effect. Um, and uh, the use of warm, darker colours, darker tones, burnt umber and so forth, in the foreground uh, to, bring that, to bring that forward. Uh, there's a lot of other things I could do to this painting. Um, as I say, put a lot more twigs and branches in. But um, I think that's enough for the moment. Okay, so uh, I've enjoyed doing that. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, I hope you have a lot of success with your own paintings. Thank you.